And we move on to graphics. Now, of course, this is something that I talked about in the previous video. Like this has a TMS9918 because that is like the default graphics processor for the Z80. But you know, it needs 16K DRAM, which is rare these days, which is more rare in Europe, in America. And most of these 16K DRAM chips actually require plus 12 and negative 5 volts. I happen to have some chips lying around that doesn't need those voltages, which is the MB8118 chip. This is a great chip for those of you who want to make a computer with TMS9918, who don't want like three voltages to be on your motherboard. And uh, I think the production version will at least move on to TMS19118, which is a uh, kind of a less known chip. A less well-known chip. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why. That's a great chip. It works with only two RAM chips, which needs to be 16 by 4. And that is great because those chips doesn't require the plus 12 and negative 5 volt voltage. And of course, it reduced the total chip count, it reduced the total traces, it reduced PCB area and stuff. But TMS9918 is like at the bottom, <laughs> like the bottom of the graphics pro performance for 8-bit computers. The only thing that is worse than it is the Atari 2600. And I don't want my advanced Z80 computer to be coupled with a like underdog like VDP underdog graphics system this actually draws a lot of criticism to me I mean it's frustrating I'm I'm, I'm, I'm claiming that this is the most advanced Z80 computer I'm not claiming like the the crown for graphics performance I'm not claiming the crown for most RAM I'm not even claiming like the highest CPU clock speed I'm not claiming for like the best number crunching speed. I'm just claiming that this thing can do something that no other Z80 computers can do, which is virtualization and upgrade way beyond the limit of traditional 8 bit computers without breaking software compatibility. That's what I'm claiming. So there's an easy upgrade path for the 9918 or 9118. Of course, there, there is a catch. Uh, the 9118 is an NTSC chip. And I think there's a 9128 and 9129, which is an NTSC and PAL, and they output component video, which interesting. Remember people claiming that the C64 is advanced because it introduced S-Video before S-Video? <laughs> well, the LCA video as they call it. Well, Texas Instruments, they introduced the, the public to component video, which isn't a thing before like 21st century, 2000. I think it's not a thing before that. The TMS-99 28 and 29, they output component video. And I think Motorola, they did component video with the MC6847 chip. So that's interesting. But the 91 version, which is the like two memory chip version, I can only find 9118, which is the composite output and NTSC, I cannot find the 19128 and 19129, although allegedly 
they exist. I don't know why, but the only chip I can find available in large numbers is the NTSC version, which make this like an NTSC only computer, which I don't like. I don't like. But there is an upgrade path to the 9918, which is Yamaha V9938 and V9958. Those are chips for the MSX computers. And the great thing about them is that they are TMS9918 compatible and they output RGB video. The V9958 is even more advanced than V9938 and it outputs, it outputs a crazy number of colors. For 8 bit computers at least. I mean, it's like YJK and YU, YUV mode. I, I, I think there are two separate modes. Oh no, YJK and YAE mode. Yes. However, although I do can find those chips. They are in small numbers. And there are projects like Omega MSX. And of course, there is the need to service and repair old MSX2 and MSX2 Plus computers. And those, those repairs and those projects need the V9958 and V9938 chips. I don't want to buy those chips and potentially drive up the prices for those people who want, just want to repair their computers. Those chips are already up like double their prices. Uh, during the time I, I'm like looking, uh, I'm in the retro community. They are up like from like fifteen dollars to above thirty dollars each. Maybe now, I I haven't looked at that price for a while. Maybe it has it has gone down. Maybe it has gone up. But I think I think. It's an indication that those chips are in short supply. So I don't want to use them. And there is the unicorn, the V9990, which I think everybody see the title of the most advanced Z80 computer will just assume that I use because it's the MSX Turbo R. It's the, it's not even the Turbo R. It's what the Turbo R should be. It's the MSX3. It's the V9978 minus, right? It is like the most advanced graphics chip for an 8-bit computer. And those are true. I, I played Life on Earth and I'm astonished by the graphics on an, on an emulator, of course. I haven't got like a Turbo R with, with a, 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 a graphics 9000. <laughs> it's just too expensive for me. But I've seen what a V9990 can do. It is really 16-bit graphics uh, or 16-bit-like graphics. But those chips are in even shorter supply and I just don't want to compete with people who want to make MSX computers because as much as I love my head design I think MSX is just has a lot more heritage and is I wouldn't say it's a more advanced design but it is a more important design than my personal need to promote my own architecture. Yeah, I do want to make this computer MSX emulation compatible. And if I chose the V9958 chip, I can run 
like MSX software on this machine with like hardware acceleration. I just pass those graphics calls, graphics rights to the VDP and things will be fine. And MSX like like software development guide, I think is something called like actually mandates the use of BIOS calls to address, uh, not to address, to access those external devices, which is good because I can just hook those BIOS calls and translate them to my own BIOS calls, which are called Monica calls. And there is the option for an FDGA. I cannot design an FDGA. I don't know like HDL stuff. I know a little bit of Verilog, but I don't have the time to learn it and do it in the same time. Vera is an option. It's now open source and the author of Vera actually explicitly said you can use Vera on other computers. I think that includes the hack. And there is the game Duino. Of course, it uses SBI, but that might not be a problem because I think the, the game Duino can handle a very high frequency SBI protocol. And I can use a like hardware ship register, maybe couple of its DMA to just transfer those data very fast. Uh, however, yeah, game Duino is not cheap. Uh, it uses very advanced FPGA and it is basically more powerful than the whole board. Probably, I've seen like 3D graphics running on the game Duino. So I would hesitate to use that. And there is the option to use VGA, uh, like VGA graphics chip or chipset, which means TVGA9000i or TVGA8900D. I think those chips are still readily available. And they were produced in massive numbers and there are people selling these chips like from old graphics card because i know because i bought one but it doesn't work but that chip has a ton of glitches so i would hesitate to use those chips that are pulled from old graphics card Maybe my soldering like damaged it. Maybe maybe it's just a damaged chip, but I would hesitate to use those. Also, if you are going to the realm of the VGA, you are using what's called a dumb frame buffer, which it means that the CPU is like doing all the reads and writes, it draws everything. And at a resolution of 640 by 480 at 256 colors, that is 302 kilobytes of data. Wait, I will just do a calculation. Wait a second. It's 307 kilobyte of data to modify just for one frame and it will simply overwhelm the Z80. It will simply overwhelm the Z80 if you, you try to do it. And the frame rate of any game and any software running on this thing will be, I think it will be miserable. I won't lie, I, I think it will be miserable. 